Now this is Memorial Day weekend, and we are all mindful of those who have served their country and have made the ultimate sacrifice for the benefit of their country, for their friends, their family, and even for people unknown to them. I want to ask you all to stand for a moment, and we will honor them with a moment of silent reflection. And let us also remember in silent prayer all those who are serving in the armed forces at this time. Thank you. Please be seated. Now let us enter into Sabbath rest as we listen to the prayer. <clears throat> stand for the call to worship. Blessed be God, eternal majesty, living word, abiding spirit. Glory, Glory to God, God forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, the way to see God's dream for the world is to be born from above by the spirit. The way to take part in that dream, says Jesus, is to be born of water and spirit. That gift is available this day. May you receive God's spirit, be made whole, and dwell more deeply in love divine. Let us worship God.
Please be seated. Let us confess our sins to the one who gives life eternally. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Holy God, we know that you are always there to lead us, yet we somehow lose our way and fall back into fear. We confess that we have stumbled, and we recognize a need for you to lift us up and to help us start again. Forgive us our failings, restore us to strength, and reconcile us with you, ourselves, and each other, through the power of Christ and the gift of your Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. We did not receive the spirit of slavery, but rather the spirit of adoption. Your guilt has departed, your sin has blotted out, for you are God's beloved children, forgiven, loved, and free. Let us pass the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. <laughs> Strong at the end.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that all who love him may have life eternally. With loving hearts, let us bring our offerings to God.
Holy God, your love overflows in the gift of your spirit. Bless these gifts that we offer and that they may spread your blessing in a world of hurt and need. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. Before we read the word this morning, let us pray for God's blessing upon it. Come, Holy Spirit, giver of life, breathe into us what we may hear a word of truth this day. Draw us into communion, enable us to love, conspire to make us one with you, for the world you so deeply love. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear now the word of the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a coal, a live coal that had been taken from the altar, and with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thy name in all the earth. 
Today is the day we celebrate as Trinity Sunday. The Christian concept of the Trinity is something that is sometimes difficult for people to grasp. One God in three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. How can three be one? What is the function of each person? Why does God choose to relate to us in this way? There are several models and illustrations that have been used to help describe the Trinity. For example, a triangle, three equal sides but one unit, each side giving strength to the whole. Or an egg, the shell, the white, the yolk, each one object, but each with a distinct function. To me, understanding the Trinity is interwoven with our faith. When you study God's word, you find certain threads throughout scripture, and they all seem to be designed to strengthen our faith, to strengthen our faith in God. Threads such as God the Father, being synonymous with love, Jesus being the living word of God, and the Spirit hovering over the face of the waters from the beginning and ever present in the word from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. God the Father sent and gave God the Son for our redemption. God the Son walked among us, and he gave himself in obedience to God the Father. God the Spirit was given for us by God the Son as our advocate. God the Spirit was breathed upon us and remains present with us as our helper. Our reading today is about the commissioning of the prophet Isaiah. The significances of this scripture to Trinity Sunday are primarily in verses 3 and 8. In verse 3, we read the threefold holy, describing the complete holiness of God. Not just holy is our God, but holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. In verse 8, we read the all-important phrase, as the voice of the Lord declares, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Not who will go for me, but who will go for us? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If you read verses 1 through 8, as we often do, we read verses 1 through 8. As we have done this morning, we stop right there. We are awestruck. And we, were, we are moved by this experience of Isaiah. Isaiah experiences the heavenly host. He sees the Lord seated on the throne of heaven, high and exalted. The hem of his robe fills the temple. Six-winged seraphs attend the Lord. With two wings, they cover their faces. With two wings, they cover their feet. And with two wings, they fly. They call out to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the pivots on the thresholds are shaking as the voices of those calling, and the house is filled with smoke. Isaiah responds, saying, Woe, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King. The King, the Lord of hosts, is his name. 
one of the seraphs flies to Isaiah with a live coal from the altar and cleanses his lips. The seraph says, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed. Your sin is blotted out. Then the voice resounds. The voice of the Lord. Who am I to sin? And who will go for us? And Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Wow, what an awesome and powerful scene this is. How triumphant we feel when Isaiah responds and says, here am I, send me. Let's stop there for a moment and just kind of soak it in. God in three persons, the holy, holy, holy God, is calling to us, but we are sinful. We are sinful and we have unclean lips. God cleanses us from our sin and says, who shall I send and who will go for us? We respond with a triumphant, here am I, send me. How glorious, how exciting. How wonderful. Now, God, what is it that you would want us to do? This is the scripture that follows. And God said, go and say to this people, keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull. Stop their ears, shut their eyes, so they may not look with their eyes, and they may not listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, Isaiah says, How long, O Lord? And God said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and the vast emptiness is in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth. I had to look that up. What in the world is a terebinth? It's a turpentine tree. Terebinth, or an oak. We know about oaks. We have oaks around here. Whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Okay. Hold on, Lord. This is not awesome. This is not exciting. This is terrifying. How long? What the heck? What is this? Yes, Isaiah's commissioning was awesome. He was in the very presence of God. The holy, holy, holy God and surrounded by the heavenly host. But what he was required to do was very difficult and very unpopular. We should be happy, we should rejoice that we are this side of the new covenant. You see, Jesus has changed everything. Through Jesus, God's plan is complete. And the Holy Spirit is ever present with us. Last week was Pentecost. We rejoiced in the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now we have good news to proclaim. Nothing about wastelands, nothing about death and all that stuff. We have good news to proclaim. The best news ever in all creation. God is with us. Emmanuel, 
our Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the breath of God is now upon us. Thank God that our commission is not that of Isaiah. We have been cleansed by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Our lips are clean, our sins are forgiven. We received power when the Holy Spirit came upon us, and now we are witnesses to the entire world. This is what Jesus says to us. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So there it is. Some people say that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in the Bible. Look at this scripture. Jesus said it. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right there in what we call the Great Commission. Matthew 28. Father, Son, Holy Spirit are with us always until the end of the age. We have good news to proclaim. Sealed by the triune God, we are commissioned to share. Perhaps you have not had a vision of the heavenly host, but you are commissioned. We are commissioned to love, to give, to serve, to share, to teach, to worship. Threads of faith in the scripture guide us. The triune God is asking, whom shall I send and who will go for us? What will our response be? Let me check my calendar. I may be able to help when my life gets back on track. Let me go and take care of some things, and then maybe I'll help. God, I'm working right now. I'll be able to help more when I have retired. God, I'm retired right now. I gave enough when I was younger. It's time for me to rest. Or will it be, here am I, Lord. Send me. We are a new church, Mountain Reformed Church. What will our vision be? Of course, our primary purpose is to worship God and to proclaim the glory of the Lord. I hope we will also be available to serve. Every one of us has time, talents, and resources that we can give. Our church is a small group with a big vision. There's a need in the Prescott area for what we would like to provide. We seek to provide reverent, peaceful, and beautiful worship. A kind of worship that utilizes the fine arts as a sweet aroma for the nostrils of God. We seek to be a church where musicians and artists from all around our community can come and have a safe and inviting place to express their joy to the Lord of hosts. A church where people of all ages and all backgrounds are welcome and celebrated. I was moved by what Lindy, the recorder player, <laughs> I was moved by what Lindy wrote in what she affectionately calls the blurb that she often sends me each week. She calls it, here you go, Joe, here's the blurb for this week. It's always much more than a blurb. 
I hope that you read what we send out in the emails because Lindy is a wonderful Christian writer. And Lindy this week, she wrote that we need to be willing to share our concerns with others. We need to depend on our Christian friends for support. Whether we have sickness, trouble, no matter what's going in our lives, if we share the burden with others, our friends can pray for us, stand alongside us, help us. This is what the church is about. Right now, our church has some concerns and questions. These are where, how, and when kind of questions. But all this comes back to faith. We have a beautiful place here in the library auditorium. It's a great starting point for us. We're very fortunate to be able to gather here for worship. But eventually, we will need our own space so that much more ministry can take place. Our worship and service need to be extended throughout the week so that people of all ages can come and go for Bible studies, fellowship, music lessons, rehearsals, and other activities. We have this dream of being a place where we could provide space for groups all over our community. We have a deficit of space for people to rehearse in, perform in, things of that nature. And as a church, we can not only provide space, but we can also provide ministry and share the love of Jesus with these people who enter our space. And that's our vision and dream. And it's not just about music. That's just one of the things. There are many things that can happen uh, as we, we seek God's will in this. We have no idea how, when, or where we could have space of our own. If you haven't noticed, things around here are kind of expensive. The prices are kind of through the roof on everything. Nevertheless, we trust in whatever God chooses to do. We will respond to this through prayer and through faith. There may be a great deal of waiting involved. We need to grow, we need to plan, and we need to organize. We may often ask the question, how long, Lord? Just like Isaiah, how long, Lord? God will provide for us according to his will, his purpose, and his timing. We have to be patient. Our part is to remain faithful. Our part is to wait and pray, and when it is appropriate, take action. Much has been accomplished in our first four months here. We have wonderful opportunities out in front of us. I would challenge you to pray and to consider how you will serve. Be faithful, be willing, and be available. Pray for opportunities for us to share the blessings of God that we have received with others in our community. When the voice of the triune God says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Be ready to say, here am I, send me. Amen. Oh, oh. 
Let us affirm our faith by reading together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Let us pray. Thank you, God, that we are new covenant Christians. We stand with the triune God to support us in all that we do. We have a commission to spread good news, good news that changes lives. And God, we pray that we will be faithful in this as Mountain Reformed Church and as individuals. We pray that we would share your good news with all that we meet. Pray that we would serve an as example in our actions. We pray that your spirit would compel us to serve, to go, and to do things according to your will and your purpose. God, help us to have patience when it just feels like we have to say, how long, or, O oh Lord? Give us patience because your timing is the timing that we desire. We will follow you and be willing servants. God, we pray for all those who are hurting today in our world, those who have sickness, those who have sorrow, those who need a touch from you, Father. We lift them to you. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for joy to be restored to so many people who need it, Father. We ask, God, that you would give us your word in full measure, that we would understand it, we would comprehend it, and help us to be willing servants and be willing to say, here am I, Lord, send me. And in obedience, we pray the prayer that your son taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God said, Whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Life-giving God, free us from our fear, 
Fill us with your love and send us forth in peace. May the Lord give you strength. May the Lord bless you with peace. Amen. Thank you.